So another thing a lot of you want to do uh, is build your own computer and you sort of don't know where to start. Um, I luckily employ quite a few people and we always have new machines, new developers starting so uh, we build our own and it's really simple. So I was just going to show you the process uh, from start to finish from specking out, ordering the parts to physically building it to installing Windows, you know, the, the entire job from start to finish as well as uh, you know how you do things so computers are always changing so there's always new things out uh, and there's always you know new technologies new interfaces new speeds new processors uh, but since I don't know for the last 15 years I've been building computers you don't really need to know anything new uh, it's all the same thing so if I haven't built a computer in say a year I know for a fact things will have changed there'll be new standards out new connectors but it's it's always the same process so I'm going to show you that so firstly you can either base your build off money or you can base it off um, speed or maybe you've got a very specific requirement of you know I want a certain processor or I, I want this graphics card it's it's one of those things specking it out in terms of what you like um, is I guess the hardest part and it's just deciding what do you like so this is going to be a machine for developer so I don't really need a, a powerful graphics card so I'm not bothered about that the key thing I want is a good processor so I'm going to start my search with uh, processors and I want it in a certain range price range so you'll get a feel for the price differences uh, I'm going to go with an Intel CPU if you don't know which one to go for AMD always used to be on top of the game for years they were always the go-to place Intel were, were so far behind it was uh, you know, it was almost a joke. Whereas for a good few years now, Intel have, have been on top. So I'm going to pick Intel. But again, just do some Googling on desired chips if you like. But basically, since the Intel, um, you know, the i5, the i3, the i7s come out, these things are, are so good that it isn't even worth looking anywhere else. So I go to the Intel processors, and you can sort by, say, price, high to low. And I usually go high to low and then go down until. I get to a point where I'm happy to pay that. Uh, so obviously I don't want any Xeon server processors. Even if you want it, say you had all the money in the world and you're like, oh, I'm going to buy this thing at £3,000. You've got to know what you're buying here. So this is a server processor. So this isn't exactly fast. It's 2.3 gig. So for like video processing, like what I do for these videos, this is not going to be good. What it is good at is it's got 18 cores. It's got a hell of a lot of threads it's it's designed for servers that's the point of the xeon range so things where you have say thousands of clients hitting up a server and they're all tiny requests but you need a lot of concurrent parallel threads so xeons avoid they're also super expensive and the i7s are great this thing's awesome but again i don't want to pay one and a half thousand pounds just for this processor so i'll keep scrolling down uh, and i'll get to more realistic range so if i want a really good one um i'm gonna you know pay this 800 pounds up here uh, so you can see from this the i7 uh, 6900K. So this is clearly the current sort of uh, good processor. Uh, but what you can sometimes find is um, ones that get overly um, cheap. So certainly not always because the cheap meaning the bad. It's just because they get that popular. Or sometimes there's a good batch. You know they release a certain chip and it just happens to be that fast. Like this one for example. This is a perfect one for you know a top spec machine basically it's, it's very close to top spec machine but at a realistic price um, so three, 350 there is really good if you wanted to go with a 6800 instead of paying uh, another almost well probably more than double if we go up uh, for this 6900 um, and you can see you've got if you want to find out the speeds of these you can literally type in a CPU chart into Google and you'll get like comparisons of speeds and clock speeds and just do a bit of research on your processor. Um, if money's the driving factor anyway, there's kind of not much point um, other than um, comparing, you know, like processors. But basically, in as it stands right now and as it's been for probably a year, you can't really go wrong with, with core i5s and 7s. So they're all going to be good. So base your decision off price range. So because this is a developer machine for me, um, and this is, well not for me, for people that work for me, uh, and we want them nice and powerful, I'm going to buy this nice expensive um, 6900K here. Uh, to give you a feel for, if you're trying to spec it out and you're saying I've got a £1,000 budget, 
then in terms of percentages of cost there's so many things you need um, and I guess we'll we'll just add everything to the basket and then you can see as we go uh, what prices are but in general motherboards you can save money on if you're not too fussed about you know generally I hate to say it, but you could buy a 40 pound motherboard that sometimes is as good as a 500 pound motherboard so motherboards are generally you don't want to spend your money on it's it's a rare case where you do and some people will argue different that you know the motherboard is the most important it does everything but honestly i've had i built a three thousand pound machine with a 40 pound motherboard in and it performs be better and faster than the last machine i built with um a 500 pound motherboard because it was just overly cumbersome and the the boot process was slow and sluggish because it was trying to figure too many things out it, you know it had over overdone itself with complexity so motherboards tend to be uh, you probably want to pay about a hundred pounds if you're going good quality like we're going to go uh, but if you're going bog standard and you're not too fussed you can pick up a motherboard for say 40 50 pounds um, a processor is where the bulk of your money is going to go between processor and graphics card you're going to consider to pay around the same for each so if i'm going to go with something as high spec as this uh, 800 pound processor if I was building a general equal machine, I'd probably end up spending £800 on a graphics card as well. But because I'm not really doing any graphics, this is for a developer, I'm only going to spend £200 on a graphics card, and I could even go less, uh, but I'm just going to keep it. You know, you don't want to go too low. So think of a CPU and a graphics card about the same price. Uh, the motherboard about £50, the case and the power supply about £50. Again, if you keep it budget, um, about £100. And Twelve, uh, probably you know, about a hundred pounds, I'd say, for a, a good case and power supply. Um, so again, what we'll do is just add everything to the basket, show you how to choose everything, and then you can look backwards after once we've got everything in the basket at sort of the percentage of how much things cost, and then for when you build one, you could say, well, if you've got a thousand pounds, I'd say now if you've got a thousand pounds, your processor wants to be down in the two hundred pound range is my assumption to fit everything in so you go to an i5 you'd maybe squeeze in an i7 like here um, but if not then i'd drop to this i5 so you're trying to get something for a thousand pound i'd start around the 200 pound mark for your processors so let's just keep going and you'll see uh, what happens as we go so i'm going to add this processor so we add this to the basket and get rid of that uh, so let's just have a look at that because now what you need to do if we've started with the processor we need to pick a motherboard that has this socket. So you can see it says here socket 2011 V3. So don't worry too much about the V3. It's this socket is the main thing we're interested in. So it's an LGA 21, uh, 2011 and that has to be uh, the right socket on the motherboard. And sometimes you can also find inside here, I don't know whether we will here, you'll, you'll find sort of existing people that have purchased motherboards or there you go like also purchased here uh, so you can see it's called x99 on the socket 102011 so you can get a feel sometimes for what your motherboard is but we know it states here socket 2011v3 so let's just go to motherboards first uh, which are where are the motherboards uh, intel motherboards again you can do either either motherboard you don't have to go well you have to obviously keep it the same as your uh, your CPU. So if you've got an Intel CPU, you need an Intel motherboard. So let's start with that. And then you can see the sockets here. 2011 V3 is an X99. And that's the only option. So it, we can't go wrong there. If you're struggling to figure out which socket it is, because sometimes you've got two names like this, H1101151, and just do a Google on socket name and you'll find out. So now we've got the list of um, motherboards I'm gonna do high to low again and you can see you can pay a thousand pound for a motherboard I'm like seriously don't do that there's never um, there's never a need for that um, so scroll down I'm gonna go to be honest I'm gonna start at the lowest and the lowest for this is actually 200 pounds because this is a top spec CPU so they have sort of got you by the balls right now they know that this socket is designed for the high-end, what's currently high-end CPUs. So the same, well, if you're going to go with that CPU, you're going to have to pay £200 for this motherboard. So if we just jump back to um, the CPUs again, if we were going to go with the cheaper 
uh, 200 pound i5s, so like say one here, it's got a 1150 socket. So if we went with a 200 pound um, CPU, and then you went to, you can then see there's three different types, so you'd have to make sure you got the right type, look at the description of the processor, and you'd go into these, and you can see 40 pounds, 50 pounds. So the higher cost the CPU, um, is often a higher cost in motherboard um, but if you're going unless you're going with the top spec like I am here typically you can get a motherboard for 40 50 pounds so I'm going to go to um, basically the cheapest motherboard almost uh, so I'm going to do we've got Asus Extreme uh, out of stock and you can sometimes look at reviews I don't always believe them uh, but sometimes if you have uh, a lot of reviews I like got four there that's quite a lot of reviews uh, so you could be assured that's good, but I'm literally going to go with the cheapest one. And what you want to check on your motherboard now, for one, it's the right socket, which it is. And then two, you want to make sure you've got everything you need connected. So you can see here, one thing that motherboards sometimes come with, if you're trying to save money, is you don't always need a graphics card. So some of them come with integrated graphics, and it should be fairly easy to see in the specs. So you should go down to your specs and... Uh, GPUs, internal connectors, back panels, so if I just do a find for graphics, there's nothing in there. So this doesn't have integrated graphics, and again, higher up motherboards you tend to find they won't bother with the integrated graphics, but if we just jump onto another window, and let's open up a, a cheap motherboard, and graphics, there you go, as soon as you search graphics, the very first statement, uh, this board, blah, 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 superb integrated graphics. So if this has got integrated graphics, it means there's a graphics card on here. It's not necessarily a card, but it's got a graphics processor. So you can build this machine and you don't even need to buy a graphics card. And you can also tell it by the connector here. So you've got a D, DVI and a D-sub or a, a VGA connector. So this is where you connect your monitors. So that's sort of a telltale sign as well if you look at the connector. Where If you look at this connector, you can see there's no... Um, no way to connect a monitor so you need a graphics card so again that's something to consider to get really cheap uh, you, you don't even need graphics cards and and to be honest they aren't bad um, unless you want to do games then integrated graphics cards that they're, they're okay to be honest there's nothing wrong with them so it's, it's a choice you can make uh, if you can find um, motherboard with integrated graphics so if I went potentially up to because my graphics card is going to cost me I'd say at least £100, maybe two. I could flick up to, say, something that's £100 more uh, and potentially look at, seeing if I can find anything that says integrated graphics, which it doesn't. And then looking at the picture, which there's USB-C, but there's no no graphics again. So you can do that, you know, weighing up the difference between trying to find a motherboard with integrated graphics and not. But one thing I will say is that once you get high up, in terms of um, the oops added to a wish list then by mistake once you get high up CPUs you don't tend to get integrated graphics and um, they just tend to not put them on the motherboards so I'm gonna add that one oh sorry let's finish off what we're looking for so for one we know we need integrated graph we need a graphics card for this Two, then you want to look at the back. So you've got, <laughs> I've never seen PS2 for a long while. It's, a, it's funny to see that on there. That's like a really old mouse and keyboard connector. Um, so you've got your USBs, you've got your Ethernet, you've got your audio panel here. So this is quite a basic um, motherboard. Uh, the size is also the other thing. So motherboards come in different sizes. You've got ATX, which is your standard big motherboard. Uh, then you've got mini ATX, micro ATX, pico ATX, all based on sizes. So if you want to fit something in a small case, I tend to go with uh, mini ATX, which is a lowercase m, and then ATX. Um, and then all, the only difference in buying a different size motherboard is make sure your case matches that size. So if you've got an ATX, you need to make sure that the case can fit at least an ATX in, which is usually the full size cases. So we'll come to that after. Uh, so we know we've got a motherboard with USBs, we've got Ethernet, the other thing most people forget is there's, there's not usually Wi-Fi built into motherboards, so you'll either need a USB Wi-Fi dongle 
or a PCIe card with Wi-Fi. I'd stick just with a USB Wi-Fi dongle for now. And then you want to check that it also supports the CPU. So even though this says it supports Intel Core i7 processors with the socket, that doesn't always, majority of the time it does, but that does not always mean it's going to support your processor just because it's this socket. So if you want to be double sure, which I recommend you are, you want to go to the manufacturer website for your specific motherboard. So if we just type this into Google and you'll always have on decent motherboards, so you'll have to find the, the actual manufacturer website, uh, you should have something that shows um, the CPU support and the memory support. Uh, so if we scroll down, and you can also find some, you know, nicer looking images and specs on, on what you're buying as well, if you really want to, you know, dig in and do your research. Uh, I'm not usually that bothered about this stuff. So I'm guessing it's going to be in specs. I'm certainly hoping it's it's going to give us uh, what we're after. So specs, we've got all this lot. And then if you can't find it, oops, if you can't find it here, which it doesn't look like we're going to find it here. There we go, detail. And now CPU, prefer, uh, please refer to CPU support for compatible CPU. Uh, the above description is for reference only. So this is what we want, the CPU reference and the same memory. Um, again, very rare will RAM not work, but if you want to be super sure, you, you just pick the motherboard and then make sure your RAM uh, works with it. So it's actually saying, please refer to CPU support and yet I can't see it anywhere. So, where's the CPU support? Okay. They're referring us to somewhere. I'm just going to click all the links. Here we go. So, I've gone to the support for it. And manual. No. Utility. Quick guide. Uh, compatibility. There we go. So, sometimes it's hard to find. You can... You can shortcut this, and I probably could have found this page if I'd have just pasted uh, this in to Google and just added CPU support. And I bet this would take me straight to the page. No, it wouldn't. Support for, or would it? Is this the page? Yes, this would have got me closer. We're on sort of the page there. You just click compatibility, but you just have to do a bit of digging sometimes. Other times, it's really easy. So we're on the compatibility page. We've got the processors. And now we can just go to our basket and we have the Intel i7 6900K and then we've got an exact model number there. So let's start with that 6900K. So it's here and there's only one of them. So if it's got um, the actual the CPU model number and it's in the support list, then that's it. We'd support it. And the other thing to look at for, even though it says it supports the CPU, something that can rarely happen is the firmware which i think is the result here which seems all the same oh no there you go so you can see the ends changing so it starts at version 10 then 1b then 1d and th what this i'm guessing is and what it usually is is the lowest firmware version because sometimes the firmware on the motherboard gets updated to support newer processors and what you can sometimes find is if you buy from a place that doesn't keep fresh stock of, of motherboards you can have an old firmware on the motherboard so even though it says it supports it here say it supports it in firmware 1b and you buy a motherboard that's got firmware 06 then it's not going to boot up but in that instance the place you bought the motherboard from should honor your uh, return or request to have new firm you know a, a board with the newer firmware so as long as it's in uh, your cpu compatibility list uh, then you're 99.9% you're .9 sure it'll work. I've only ever had it happen once in my life where I brought a CPU that was on the support list and I happened to get one with a, a lower model firmware. And that usually only happens if you're working with the very latest CPUs that have only just come out. So you should be perfectly fine there. So we're going to... We know the CPU works with this motherboard. The next question is how much memory do you want? How much RAM? And again, this usually just boils down to... Um, preference of uh, money for the most part sometimes if you're doing gaming then you want you know a specific high speed um, one thing I will say about RAM is never bother going above 32 ever there's just no need 
uh, and it will also massively slow down your system. It won't make it faster because then you've got all this RAM that has to be initialized and checked and, and kept in tow and it, it really does slow your system down. So the perfect amount of RAM really is 16 gig and just high quality fast 16 gig and there's rarely a need for more than that. So we're going to go with 16 gig for hours. Uh, so you want to make sure this can support uh, 16 gig. It can support DDR4, which again, there's types of memory. So you want to match um, DDR4, and this is usually the maximum. So this isn't the... You, you haven't got to get DDR4-3333, which is just the speed. Uh, it means it supports up to that. But I'd definitely stick with DDR4. I wouldn't drop to DDR3. Uh, but again, now you're on the support page, we can just go to memory support. And we can see there DDR4, and you'll see they're all DDR4. That's why I say stick to DDR4, not 3. But you can see the speeds here can be all kinds of speeds. They don't need to be the fast ones. So you want to pick, again, partly off price um, and partly off your requirement. So size here, have we got any kinds of filter? No, so well, let's maybe just type 16 GB in. No, that's not going to show. It's probably per stick, actually. Well, it's not going to show that anyway. So, we know, I'd say in terms of makes, let's have a glance at the makes, but I say Corsair are, are a good make. Uh, Crucial are good, G-Skill are good. HyperX are good. Uh, I wouldn't touch the others, so I'd stick with those, really. They're the main ones I always pick, is HyperX, Crucial... G skill is more for overclocking gaming type people. Seems to be more of a a thing there. Um, we've also got to check here for if it supports two, four, or eight sticks. Um, so let's go with. You also want in terms of the number. I'm going to add this to my basket because I'm quite happy that I'm going to find some RAM. It works from the CPU, and that's all I'm really bothered about. So you can take a look at what else you've got. You know, if you want specific audio or anything else, or um, you know, but there's nothing, nothing much else I want to to pick on this motherboard. So I'm just going to add that, and that's the motherboard sorted. We're going to move on to the RAM, which we're in the middle of picking. So if we go to DDR4 RAM, and then the speeds again, leave. I just leave us in DDR4. Let's sort by high to low. And again, I don't want to pay stupid money, so I'll scroll down a bit. Uh, and then we can see 32 gig. Again, you don't want 32 gig. You can. There's nothing wrong with 32. I certainly wouldn't go above. Uh, but I'd stick with 16 gig. And then you can see we've got filters here for brands. So I'm going to go Corsair. But they've also tagged us top. Um, and that's it. I'm just going to stick with Corsair. Keep it simple. And then we'll scroll down. And we'll find... We'll get down to maybe a few hundred pound. Around 200 pound again. Um, and then we've got these, we've got four sticks here, so one thing I'd try and say is try and stick with as few sticks as possible, as few memory sticks as you can, so like just two. Uh, so I'm going to go the page before, so it should be basically two 8 gig sticks. And you also want to buy, if you want say, if you wanted 32 gig memory, I wouldn't go and buy two lots of these 16 gig. I'd try and buy four lots of the 8 so that it becomes the... 32 gig because when you buy them in sets like this and the, the four times two times these have been specifically paired up at the factory to be exactly the same uh, so they all work together really nicely if you just go ahead and buy individual sticks and try to put them together then it's not going to be as good so pick the amount you want say 16 gig like here and then you can either base it entirely on price and just go right i'm going to spend 200 pounds and that's it if you've got a bit more flexibility then what you want to look for is what is this called this cast timing and basically the higher the number here the worse the memory so you can see we've got 16 uh, 18 18 36 and you've got 19 23 23 45 so this memory is going to be slower than this memory um, even though it's got a higher clock speed uh, internally how things function it's going to be poorer quality so you've got to balance off between actual memory speed which is 4000 megahertz and the internal timings because these you can sort of combine these if you will and do that times that or rather that divide by that whichever way around uh, but in essence you want you want the lower cast numbers 
um, more so than you want the, the clock speed because this internally means they work quicker and more efficiently. You can do googling on the whole cast speed thing but to keep it really simple lower lower cast values are better um, but then obviously you want to get this up as well. You don't want to drop to 2400 just to save a couple of you know like two points on the cast so uh, find like a balance basically. So these are all two, these are three uh, so that's and these vengeance are usually good. So eighteen, twenty, twenty, uh, two, four, three, six. So if we go into the four, then you're getting twenty. You're getting quite high, not massively, but it's either we go right down to. Uh, I'd say three six is probably a, a decent middle ground. Again, this isn't critical. Uh, you know, it's not going to make a huge amount of difference. They're all going to be good. They're all going to perform. Um, but you do want to try and get uh, the lowest numbers as possible. And again, sometimes the price dictates that and gives you a hint and others it doesn't. So, see we've got this champion 16 gig that's like more, but look how low the values are. And it's it's 3.4, but it's 18.18. So if we go cheaper, you've got 3.4. In fact, actually that's, that's pretty much on par with that. 36, uh, 40. In fact, the cheaper one's better as well. So I don't want to spend too long messing around. I'm just going to pick. Uh, because I've done Vengeance before, I'm probably going to go with the Vengeance. I'm actually going to go with the higher clock speed this time. Um, and just the, the worst cast rating. So if I was going to pick this, and click this, and we want to make sure this is supported. So, we, and again, you don't always have to do this, because if it's not in this list, it usually is supported anyway. It's not. I rarely check. RAM, I, I tend to just buy RAM, it, it almost always works. So you see that isn't on there, it isn't on the supported list. So CMK, so CMKs are on, uh, 16, GX4M, uh, 2E, So it's the 2E part that's not supported. In fact, the only one it's showing there is that. Uh, so we could potentially do the opposite then and go, in fact, have we picked too high a clock speed? No, we haven't. Or have we actually? What was the max that's supported? Um, let's take a quick look at what the motherboard's maximum supported speed was. Uh, so the DDR, the memory, supports 3333 three, three, three. Ah, it hasn't got explicitly 3200 there so maybe we just picked a um, a slightly funny speed so I'm not going to pick that one then let's go to uh, maybe this one or what well, the other thing we can do is we know the Corsair was in there it was just that it was this, but it's, it's quite slow, so we don't really want slow. So let's go the other way around. Let's do uh, look on here for, um, I guess, the top one, one of the top ones. And the, what you can find is they tend to stick to the lower speeds. So let's pick around 3000. Let's go to Corsair again. And let's pick a 2666 Samsung 16 gig. And let's just search for that part number. Let's see if we can find this specific supported RAM. I think that's £500. I am not paying that for RAM. That's a 64 gig. Even though that says it's 16 gig. Uh, let's pick another one. And then like I say, you can just pick RAM that isn't on that list and I can almost guarantee it'll work fine. It's just that they heavily test with you know certain makes. So there we go. This one's on uh, their list of supported uh, chips. So apparently, all these, so 3216, it's only a hundred pounds. So you've also got to check that when you've searched, the thing you've searched for is the same value because this isn't the same value. I've searched for it and it's given me results that aren't the same chip. So yeah, this is just literally returned different vengeance chips uh, 6,000 so I, I'm not going to even match up identical I'm just going to pick 
a vengeance that I've used before. Not on this build, obviously, but I've, I've used vengeance uh, ram before. So I'm just going to go back and actually pick that memory that I'd originally decided on. Which isn't in the support list. So I'm going to go with... Do, 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 where was it? It was around the 200-ish pound mark. 32, 32, 32, 32. 16. Right, so we've got some vengeance here. It's actually hard to find 32 gig these days. At 16 gig, they want to push to 32. So I'm just going to go with this one, to be honest. So I'm going to pick this. We can double check, see if that's in the list, but I don't think it is. Nope. So again, this will show you that you can you can just buy RAM. You don't always need to um, to have it. You know, matching the the list. I'm sure this will work fine. So let's go ahead and buy that. All you've got to make sure is that your clock speed is within range. So it's DDR4, which is the right type, and that this speed, uh, two one three hundred, is is within. You know, it's lower than what the motherboard's rating the speed at. So, uh, you know, two one three three is there. Uh, so that's what we're going to go with. So that's the RAM sorted. Um, we then have power supply and sometimes you can get power supply in case or in fact let's jump onto hard drive first that's a nice quick decision in this day and age I'd stick with SSD I wouldn't go with HDD which is the old style mechanical hard drives just stick with SSD do the same thing pick a price range pick a size go with what you want SSDs are expensive so if you want one terabyte of data then that's a lot of money uh, but what I'd recommend is is if you've got the money for it if you want say two terabytes of data but you need that cheap um, then just get a hard drive normal hard drive one terabyte for like 40 pounds probably now um, but then when you run your operating system and any files that are accessed all the time just buy the cheapest smallest SSD that can fit it on so at least your operating system is running on an SSD because that'll make a huge difference to the speed of the whole system so I'd go to like you know go down to a high price for 50 pounds if you can and chuck it on there um, so that's a real idea that will make a huge difference to your system so if you've got the money I'd recommend entire SSD like on this I'm going to chuck in a complete SSD with one terabyte um, but if you haven't got that kind of money then just try and at least get a small SSD to put your OS on put Windows on um, and then you know a normal hard drive for the other part so that's memory sorted uh, if you still want to use DVDs and Blu-rays just go ahead and buy any they're all fine I, I don't even fit them I haven't fit them for years now and then that brings us on to uh, the case and the power supply and the what you can usually find is again if you, you want to save money if you go to cases and this is where the size is coming full tower midi tower uh, so I think midi towers fit ATX in let me just have a quick look uh, ATX supports the ATX ATX yeah so um, MIDI towers are your general towers like this normal size full towers are the massive server towers you know your big huge long ones with extra so you can't tell much on the picture but trust me these things are massive um, and then this is where I said if you brought a smaller if you'd brought a mi micro uh, ATX like a mini ATX board or micro ATX rather that's even smaller then you can get a smaller case so it all depends on the size of the motherboard you purchased if you're unsure just stick with a midi tower and it'll fit it'll always fit in a midi tower uh, so you've got no issues there uh, the other side is if you've brought a huge graphics card then you sometimes you have issues with graphics cards fitting in cases uh, so that's something you can't really judge for or avoid you just have to to go with it so for cases again uh, what I was saying is you can sometimes get cases with power supplies included. Again, if you're on a budget, that's a good way because you can sometimes pick a case and a power supply up for £30, £40. Uh, for me, I tend to just buy them separate now. Um, so, And I also like really plain, simple cases. I couldn't care about spending money on a case. So to me, £20 case like this, fine. So I'll just do a quick check. It fixed ATX in, which it does. Uh, and that's it. That's all I'm going to check. So 
add the basket 20 pounds and then we want a power supply and again this is something people usually massively overrate so you know if you've got a big graphics card then yeah that's going to be power power hungry like a few hundred watts uh, the CPUs tend to be um, up to a hundred watts and not always that high spec uh, so I think you might get the power rating in here you want to try and calculate things so 140 watt here so you've got a CPU of 140 watt you've got your peripherals USBs bits there nothing major and your graphics card so the, the two main thoughts about what size power supply do I need you base it on the fact of CPU and motherboard so my CPU's 140 watt uh, sorry not CPU motherboard CPU and graphics card if the CPU is 140 and your graphics card is 300 then that's touching on nearly 450 so I'd go with 800 um, and then other than that if you don't have a big powerful graphics card you're almost always fine up to 500 so because I'm gonna get a graphics card I'm gonna play it safe and just go with 800 watts but the other thing most people do is, is over spec they, they seem to think they need an 800 watt power supply just because they've got a, an i5 and a, a 200 pound graphics card that'll run on 300 watt no problem so um, unless you've you've got a really high powered CPU and a really high powered graphics card you're gonna be good with 500 watt uh, so I'm gonna stick with around 750 watt I'm gonna base it on price low to high and also uh, again not so much these days but there was the standards of power supplies in terms of what connections there were uh, and they were ATX version 1 and ATX version 2 and now it's it's become that standard you shouldn't have to even think about that uh, but let's see if this gives us the, the spec so supports the newest spec of ATX 12V so that's now all the stating uh, it, it, there used to be an issue with you know old specs and um, and trying to get specific pins like this 20 point 20 plus 4 pin but this issue has long since been resolved so you should be good just buying a power supply without having to think about anything you just buy the power supply and it works and you can have a quick look that well it's got 8 SATA connectors and 4 Molex connectors but again you'll rarely find that you don't have enough connectors for your board um, so you should be good to just buy them and if not it's a case of just a few pounds for um, adapters for plugging into existing cables and converting them to what you need so pretty much just pick the power supply rating you want and you can also get ones that detach and have um, instead of them all the cables coming out if you pay a bit more money you can get ones that come as like kits where you can just connect just the amount of cables you need um, and I'm trying to think where they are um, I've used them often I just can't think of the make uh, there'll be more than that anyway they're like you're talking about the hundred pound plus range so there you can see modular that's what they're calling them and you can see these holes here so you can literally connect uh, just the amount of cables you need and keep it cleaner um, and you've also got various different cables uh, to pick different connectors so again if money's not an issue uh, then you can always go with the modular it looks nice and it keeps the case clean um, and then you've got these semi modular which I guess so much is connected and then the rest is, is modular plugins um, so I'll get a modular just so you can see because we're going to do a video of building this up so I don't need a modular one but just so you get a feel for what it looks like um, I'm gonna buy this one so that's the power supply we've got the case so I think we need a graphics card now uh, again graphics card you can always google which is best I'm just gonna stick with Nvidia uh, and GTX and again base it on price so I don't want to pay anything crazy pay uh, maybe three or four hundred pounds Let's go down to a uh, hmm. and this is ordered in actually ordered in the order of price almost so we probably want like a see what price the 950s are so they're only 200 Let's step up a little bit there's only one in that so they're fading out a lot of choice there uh, so still and you'll also notice that a lot of graphics cards GTX 1050 £100 you sort it the opposite way GTX 1050 150 so not as much obvious difference there we step up to the highers so you got one starting at 469 and it's called GTX 1080 
and the high priced GTX 108 to a 700 so it's way more and yet it's the same name so the one thing you'll get with graphics cards is saying GTX 108 isn't as isn't just the end of that's it that's the graphics card you've got there's so many variations and so many different manufacturers because the GTX 108 is purely the uh, the, the core chip if you will the, not even the chip but the way the chip should function and behave and then all these different manufacturers uh, make their own specific versions implementations of that that standard and that that core so if you really want to get into your um, graphics cards and and find you know one that's really good then it's basically a case of just googling for the the current um, graphics cards and and looking at uh, 3D Mark benchmark test to see the quality of them, and just do, doing a general, you know, look around and experience from other people. Uh, so I don't really care so much about the graphics. This is for a software developer. So I want a, you know, a graphics card that's okay. So I'm going to pick a, again, just based on what I want to spend. Uh, I wanted to spend maybe a few hundred pounds. So this thing's going to do. Uh, if you wanted a specific connector, like we use mostly um, DisplayPort, which is here. It's got one display port, one HDMI. So I potentially want to get actually one with two display ports because we do uh, run multiple monitors. So that's about the only thing I'm going to look for. And I can always just use one HDMI, one display port. It's not the end of the world. Um, but I probably would like a, a dual um, display port if possible. Um, let's keep flicking through. So this has now got two display port, three display port, and one HDMI, and one DVI. But it's, you can see the the depth of it's now big. This is what you call a double slot. So it, I think it'll only connect to one slot. Um, yep, yeah, there one slot, but it takes up two. But we've got nothing else in those slots, so we're fine. So I'm going to go with this one just so I can have the two slots. So we add that, and then let's take a look at what we've got. The other thing you'll probably need is, depending on what CPU you purchased, sometimes they come with a, a fan, other times I can clearly see in this box there's no fan. So again, cheaper CPUs tend to come with fans built in, otherwise we need a fan to obviously cool this CPU. So we've got this socket, 2011, so if we go to fans, wherever they are, air cooling, Fans by size. Uh, fans by size. Uh, now I think this is case fans. There we go. Coolers. CPU coolers. And then can we filter by... The only problem with the site is the filtering is really bad. Uh, oh, they've added filtering here now by the looks. So 2011 V3, that's our CPU socket. So we'll filter by that. And then I'll just go and sort price high to low. And then you can get all these uh, CPU fans. Again, if, it, if it's got a fan for your CPU and you're not going crazy and overclocking things, then the cheap ones will do. Uh, it's also the size of the fan is saying 120 mil. Uh, so obviously you don't want to, I'd say you don't want to skimp in terms of go budget on a fan for the CPU because that's the main part of your um, well one of the major parts of your motherboard if you don't cool it and you you know destroy your CPU then that's not good but at the same time it, almost all these fans are going to do the job a lot of this is just marketing and wanting you to spend more money because it's a brand name and things like that but they're all going to do the same job so I'm going to go with um, pretty much not far off the cheapest. I'm just going to go with this £30 one and just take another quick look to make sure it supports it. It's 2011 which it does. So I'm going to add that to the basket. And then let's take a look in what we have now. So let's start with the motherboard. So we've got the motherboard, we place the CPU on, we attach the fan then we put the RAM in, we put the graphics card in, we need to power the whole thing, we put it all in a case, we've got a hard drive to boot to. So that should be everything. And then if you're in doubt, if you've got everything, you tend to just flick through your sections. So 
um, not so much gaming, so PC components. We've got a motherboard, we've got a processor, got RAM, got graphics card, got power supply, got storage. We've got a case, we've got a fan, water cooling we're not doing. We don't need a monitor, in fact I do need monitors, um, but I won't bore you with um, ordering the monitor. I'll do that offline afterwards. Uh, but again, monitors are simple to pick, just pick one that you want. Um, there's nothing really to think about, you can get 4K if you want 4K. I'd recommend game one with 60 frames per second at least, um, because that'll make it really smooth. It's amazing how much difference it makes in terms of smooth mouse motion. Uh, other than that, just pick a monitor you like. And then we've also got keyboard and mouse. You, you know, if you want keyboards and mice, then basically don't forget to, to order them. Same with I mentioned your Wi-Fi. You want a Wi-Fi dongle if you want to connect it wirelessly, uh, which I'd recommend just a USB Wi-Fi. Uh, these are all going to be hardwired, so I don't need one. Um, and then that's really it. So you can you can get a, a hint for flicking through that you've got everything. But in general, uh, this is all you need to build a computer. So you've got your motherboard, CPU, RAM, fan for the CPU, graphics card, and then you've got your hard drive, your case, and your power supply. And all this put together, then you can see uh, the price range here in general. And this is where you get the feel for things. So as things come down cheaper, everything comes cheaper. But in general... I mentioned if you buy a CPU, you tend to spend the same on a graphics card. In my case, I don't because uh, we're not doing any kind of gaming or anything like that. It's just so there's a, an offset there where we want mainly a really good CPU. So overall, I've spent like a thousand pound on the two major components. Then your motherboard is two hundred pound just because mine's a, um, a a modern new one, if you will. Uh, this is usually around fifty pounds, almost always. So. You can see that's there. The RAM, you don't have to spend this much. Again, you can get that cheaper. But in general, just look at the percentages. So storage, RAM, motherboard are usually all around the same price. And they're usually all around £50 unless you're doing SSD. So you could, you know, look at them as all the same price. The two high-priced ones are CPU and graphics. And then the cheap things like fans, power supplies can be cheaper and case. So you could always just bounce back and forward as well and try and get the prices up and down. But just remember that you need to pick a starting point, so pick what you want. I wouldn't start with a graphics card because graphics cards are just PCIe. They tend to just plug into anything and, and work. So I'd start with either um, your CPU or your motherboard. And the only reason you really start with a motherboard is if you're, you're looking for cheap and you want to make sure your motherboard isn't expensive, then you'd pick a motherboard and then fit that. But in general... I'd start with your CPU as your starting point, uh, and then you fit your motherboard to make sure it works with that. Then you might as well jump to your RAM to make sure the RAM is compatible and pick how much. And then you get a feel for how much money you've got left for uh, graphics card and storage and things. Um, so hopefully this is um, a good explanation of how to spec up and what to look for when you're buying things um, for a computer and i'll just reiterate it once more but you basically you have to make sure that the cpu is the right socket as the motherboard so socket 2011 and very importantly do check the cpu support of that motherboard by googling for it to make sure it definitely supports the cpu after that you should be good so i've then picked some ram that isn't even technically on the supported list but i've only again i've only ever had that i think twice in my life where the ram didn't work and you can always just return the RAM. It's not you know, a major issue. Um, so I'm pretty sure that'll all work together. Uh, and then graphics card and all the rest. There's nothing to really check compatibility for. The graphics card, uh, unless you're getting a huge one, should fit in your case fine. Um, the fan is going to fit because I've made sure the socket's the same again. The RAM, I also had to make sure was the same speed at least. That you know, it, didn't go, it wasn't too high a speed for the... The motherboard and it was the right brand ddr4 it was the right type uh, and that's it really everything else there's no compatibility issues with so as long as you keep an eye out on your cpu motherboard and ram really those three key areas everything else should be fine um, and then we can go ahead and order this now so i'm going to order this uh, and when it arrives i'm going to do a video um, of building this up and then this video will just go up all together uh, i'll probably do them in sections so this is specking out the 
um, the computer and then another video should follow almost instantly on actually building this up and checking it works and then how to install Windows on it. Uh, so yeah, any comments or any questions, just post them in the video. Thank you.